this boat too is empty. Each one of us lives in a kind of prison. And where does this prison come from? It is your own mind. First, you have to understand the mind. And when you understand the mind, then you can clean it. There is a particular Zen code. If you have finished the last meal, go and wash you. What is this last meal? And what is the content that mind feeds on? Mind feeds on desires, desires of many kind, lust, passion. And what is the mind? All these continue to grow in the human mind. It happened, a disciple was living in a monastery, but he could not gain the insights into meditation with the master. The disciple asked, Master, it is happening that I have not gained the knack of meditation. The master said, I will send you to one of my friends. He lives a little far away from here in a small town. He is the owner of a guest house. You go to him. And whatever you have not been able to learn from me, you can learn from him. He was very happy that he is going to meet the master. So he rushed and when he reached that small guest house, he realized that this person who is the owner of the guest house is no master. Instead, an ordinary man who is the owner of the guest house. So he thought maybe the master wanted to get rid of me. So he sent me here. But the owner of the guest house said, I do not know that master that you are calling the name but since you are here there is no harm to stay overnight and anyways you cannot leave in the night so when morning comes you can leave the master had told him the owner of the guest house will not say anything you have to watch his daily routine what he does and so on. He remembered the words of the master. He watched him carefully. The owner of the guest house prepared the meals, served everyone. Then he washed the pots, cleaned the place and went to sleep. This person, the disciple, also had his meals and he went to sleep. In the morning when he got up, he asked, the owner of the guest house, until I was waking, I saw everything what you did. What did you do when you got up in the morning? In, when you got up in the morning, the owner said, in the night before going to sleep, I washed all the pots. I cleaned the kitchen. And in the morning when I got up, I rinse the pots again. Now everything is in order. I have no problem. The disciple could not understand what all this meant. He went back in the morning and when he went, the master, he reported to the master. He said, did you know what did, you do? what did the owner of the guest house did? Then he started reflecting back. And he said, even in inactivity, mind gathers dust. You are not doing anything. Mind continues to gather the dust. The very purpose of meditation is to not allow any dust to gather and also come out of the prison. We live in the prison that we have created ourselves. Hinduism is a prison. Islam is a prison. Christianity is a prison. 
Zen is a prison. I am this, that, these are all the prisons. In order to come out of that, first you have to abandon the mind and connect your mind with the cosmic mind. We are part of this one cosmic harmony, synergistic harmony. Bliss is my nature. Nu is my essence. That luminosity is my essence. Then you are coming out of the individual mind and you are becoming a part of the cosmic mind. Then you have to abandon even that. Then you come to a realm which is no mind. And the master said, you missed again. He was thinking in terms of a master, but anyone who is doing things in such a way and if you are aware, you can grasp the matter from him. He was not aware. He was thinking the person should be a master, sitting down and guiding him in meditation. No, the practicality of that is you have to observe how does this happen. When the disciples said, the master said, when the last meal is over, have you finished the last meal? Then wash your pot. When do we wash our pot? And last meal means the last desire. The desires keep on brewing, keep on arising again and again in the body and which is the mind. Only when the last desire is finished, then you can wash the pot. And when you wash the pot, you have to keep it clean so that it does not gather any dust. Even in inactivity, the mind gathers dust. There is a master, his name, Zen master, his name was Blinchi. And this morning's meditation session, I will end with a Zen insight about this. Zen masters are down to earth and so unique. Life is a field of exploration of innerness for these masters. They are uniquely mindful of minute things in life around them. Out of these evolves the jewels for transformation. A simple thing. When you watch the master eating food, sitting down, putting his sticks, there is precision in that. And nothing of these activities are happening mechanically. And the moment you are mindful of even small things around you, the process of transformation has begun. One of the greatest Zen masters was Li Chi. He used to say, while I was young, I was fascinated by boating. I had a small boat and I would go on the lake alone for hours together. I would remain there, sitting in the boat and allowing the boat sail on its own. Once it happened that with closed eyes I was in my boat meditating on the beautiful night and the surrounding that was creating an overhanging aura. The night was beautiful, pleasant, cool night, full moon was in the sky with its shadow on the lake, one empty boat came floating downstream and struck my boat. My eyes were closed. So I thought, someone is here with his boat and he has struck my boat. Situations like these happen on a day-to-day -day basis with us. What naturally happens, anger arose. I opened my eyes and I was just going to say, 
going to say something to that man out of anger. Then all of a sudden, I realized that the boat was empty. Then there was no way to move or express the anger. Who to express the anger? But what we do? We express our anger in a very crazy manner. We are driving the car. Someone gives a bad drive. Your window is up. Air conditioner is on. The other car also have the AC on and the glasses up. You express a gesture, heard certain words. The person may only see your gestures, so he does the same thing again. Because of the airtight windows, closed windows, music playing inside the car and AC on, nobody hears it. It is almost like empty, but we heard our words. So Linchi realized that that boat was empty and it was simply sailing on its own down the stream and hit his boat. Then there was no way to move. To whom could I express the anger he thought? The boat was empty. It was just floating down the stream and it had come and struck my boat. So there was nothing to do. There was no possibility to express the anger on an empty boat. So Linchi said, I close my eyes. The anger was there, but finding no way, I closed my eyes and just floated backward with anger. And that empty boat became my realization. I came to a point within myself in that silent night. That empty boat was my master. And now if anyone comes and insults me, I laugh and say, this boat too is empty. I close my eyes and go within. Many situations like these come in our life. We are dealing with people in the office, people on the street, commuters, husbands, wives, children. Every moment a circumstance and situation comes that can bring anger in you. Remember the words of Linchi. Linchi said, there was no way to project my anger on an empty boat. If you realize that there is no one, how can you project your anger? But we still do. We grumble, we murmur, we say things, we make gestures. And if you ever get a chance of taking out the picture of someone who gets a video, and show it to him. We have to laugh. I closed my eyes. The anger was there. Naturally, the anger had to be there. But it was not finding a way out. This is the situation of each one of us. What did he do? I closed my eyes and just floated backward with anger. So you will float backward out of anger with a speed. And that empty boat became my realization. I came to the point, came to a point within myself in that silent night, that empty boat was my master. It taught me something. There is no way to express anger or someone. If you meet a person who is empty within, no mind, how can you express your anger unto him? I'll give you an example that had happened with my uncle. They were all traveling in the train. So on one railway station, a couple people was where to enter the train. They realized that inside the train, on a seat 
there was a lot of luggage, suitcases and so all placed on the seat and a man was sitting with his glasses on reading the newspaper. So these people requested, he said, Sir, can you remove these suitcases from the seat, place them underneath so that we all can find a place to sit down. The man paid no attention. Two, three times they asked him. He did not pay any attention. What will you do? You will get angry. Then he, someone shook him. And he said, I am asking you something. First, he put down his glass, put down his newspaper, took off his glasses and looked at him. Did you say anything to me? Naturally, you will get angry with that. What else was I doing? I was talking to you. He said, yes, tell me what you want to tell me. He said, I would like you to remove these suitcases from here and so that we can sit down. The man said, I am not ready to remove the suitcases and I will not. Saying this, he put on his glasses and took his newspaper and started reading. This was very annoying. Two, three times it happened. They called the ticket collector and mentioned him the same thing. This man is not removing these suitcases and the seat is occupied. We all want to sit down. The ticket collector did the same thing, asking the question, why are you not removing these suitcases from the seat? He did not pay any attention. Then same thing happened, the ticket collector shook him. He put down his newspaper, took off his glasses and said, Did you say anything to me? The same story went on. And at this, the ticket collector called the porter and asked him to throw all this luggage, take it out from the seat and put it on it. Unconcerned, the man put on his glasses, took the newspaper and started reading. When the suitcases were being moved, there was a noise. An army man got up from the seat, berth up this upper berth, and slapped the porter and said, With whose permission are you removing these things? Everyone was stunned. Then the ticket collector asked, Are these does do these things belong to you? He said, Yes. Then the whole matter was narrated. The army men too burst into laughter. But they, this did not affect the man with the newspaper. Then they shook him again, put down the newspaper and took off his glasses. He said, why didn't you tell us that this luggage does not belong to you? His simple reply was, no one asked me that question. Everyone was asking me to remove the luggage. How can I do that? It does not belong to me. I would have been slapped the same way. You will get nothing like that. But that man did not want to speak anything other than he is asked for. And what we do? We keep on saying things which are not asked for. This is the situation of each one of us. And Lynchy said, and now if someone comes and insults me, I laugh and say this book is also empty. I close my eyes and go to him. You can use this technique. It may work miracles for you. It has worked for Lynchy. The choice is yours. I am simply, simply sharing my insights and my experiences of millions of lives with you all. Simple techniques, how to come out of prison that we are in. Some of you live in America. Is American your religion? No. American is a way of your life. 
Is Trinidadian your religion? Is European your religion? Then how can Hinduism be a religion? The religion is ancient most, which my grandmother said your religion is the same as that of God. Religion is the quality. What is the quality of God? Beyond is not born out of normal ways and means, comes into existence out of his own creation, always existed, eternal, luminous, full of compassion. These are the qualities of God as you call. These are qualities that you are born with as well, but you are not aware of. You have not explored any one of these or lived with them. This is eternal. Never born, never died. What is born is your body. The humus is born and dies. But that luminosity is never born, never dies. It is always there. When you light a candle, where does the light come from? When you put off a candle, where does the light, the flame goes? It just disappears, just as a drop that was there disappears in the ocean and loses its existence. And in a way it loses its existence and in another way it becomes ocean. This is your nature. The light is put off, the flame it disappears. Where does it go? It goes nowhere, it comes from nowhere. This is the meaning of thus came, thus gone. All of a sudden, you appear. This is the meaning of incarnation. All of a sudden, the Hindu gods appeared and then we saw them. The light was invisible to your eyes. With a certain mechanism, it was ignited. You put a wick in front of it. It became flame and light begins to shine. The fluid finish, the flame is off. It comes from nowhere and goes nowhere. That is the nature of the human. Your nature. Because that which is luminous in you and that when it ignites the humus, the mind, the body, everything becomes active. The moment the humus, the body is extinguished, put on, the flame disappears and dissolves once again. So how can your nature, how can your religion be Hinduism or Christianity or American or European or anything else? This is the way of life that you live. You live Muslim way, or a Hindu way, or a Christian way. But this is not your religion. That was the essence what my grandmother said when I asked her what is my religion. My religion is eternal. Never born, never died. Luminosity, light, compassion, oneness, harmony. Harmony with the entire existence. And when you live with that luminosity, you can follow any way. You become fluid-like and can acquire any shape wherever it is put. You put the water in a cup, a cup of water, a bucket of water, a bottle of water and so on and so forth. Neither the quality of the water changes, nor its intrinsic value. What changes is shape. When the same light manifests through electric bulb, it is known as light of the bulb or, or fluorescent light or bulbs of different color. All these shapes and color comes from the humus which is shot light. The moment you live with this understanding, you will realize you can overcome any situation may come along you. And like Linchi you will say this boat 
do this thing.